I am Martin from Pro Guiding Service, and I would like to show you guys what a uh, reasonable sized alpine guiding overnight backpack can look like. So I've laid all of this gear out here in some sort of like a logical fashion. I'd like you, uh, I'd like to take you through it, show you how a pack can be actually relatively light and bearable, even as an overnight pack. Okay, so I'd like to start out by telling you guys a little bit about what uh, what I actually like um, use as my house segment. So here's the tent, a very amazing piece of equipment, two and a half pounds for a double wall, two vestibule tent. Um, it's pretty amazing. Comes with a light sleeping bag, a nice lightweight um, self-inflatable pad, also from Thermores, and then very basic or um, you know spoon and a bowl. But then I have like this uh, dromedary bag, which is very helpful when you're trying to not go and grab water all the time. One water bottle, a light jet boil and this right here and the fuel and a fuel calculation like this in the current weather was partially running water partially melting snow you should easily be able to to get away with two and a half ounces per person per day this is the food bag right here I'm not going to take all the food contents out but you can probably dial it in by counting depending on your body size and exertion level anywhere between three and four and a half thousand calories per person per day so this is my house. So now we're going to talk about like personal equipment, ranging all the clothing and and from from head to toe. So starting with the boots, this is a nice lightweight, fully crampon adaptable, fully waterproof mountaineering boot. Nice soft shell pants, a nice base layer top that then gets complemented with another short sleeve base layer a mid layer, a lightweight outer shell, a very light head cover, a sun hat, a puffy a pair of gloves, and a pair of gaiters. You need to have high quality sunglasses and here's somewhere <laughs> where you can save a lot of weight. There is enough sunscreen here to sustain me for a week. There's lip balm, and there's my toothbrush, here's my toiletry bag. You are set. That's it for personal equipment. Technical equipment. Depending on the season, <clears throat> the biggest variation in here for me is most likely the caliber of, um, of crampons that I will use. So here right now we're in early season and most of the time we actually use, um, we can use a, a fairly aggressive but still aluminum crampon. That's sufficient when you're just snow climbing um, so we have crampons, a modern lightweight alpine climbing harness, a decent crevasse rescue set, and a small alpine climbing rack. One picket, a very nice all mountain piolet, a 40 meter uh, 9 millimeter rope, and a good climbing helmet. This will take you up many, many classic alpine climbing routes. But I cannot skimp on safety. It's very, very important. And with that, I have to have one of the holy threesomes. I have to have a map, um, some form of orientation, a compass, maybe a small GPS, an altimeter, and also a high quality uh, form of uh, communication because we're in remote mountains here so this is a satellite phone that is in here. I also have an elaborate first aid kit and the um, always useful for all kinds of things Leatherman. So and now all of this needs to go into a backpack. So the, the backpack um, also is, is a particular choice of mine and in a nutshell I'm trying to have an overnight technical backpack for alpine climbing certainly 
to be no bigger than 45 liters, 50 liters at max, maybe if the route is, uh, demands a lot of gear, or the temperatures are colder, or I'm out for more than several days. So the typical thing about a, a good alpine climbing backpack is that its appearance is really very cleaned up. There are not a lot of things, not a lot of frills on the outside. That's one thing. The other, <clears throat> the other thing is that the hip belt is hopefully removable and that it's actually fairly thin. Um, so that it doesn't get in the way of the harness. The top lid, I like to have removable off of the, off of my pack, so that I can have that inside the tent with me, sort of as my, as my little ditty bag. Or also, if I am on a route and the climbing is fairly technical, I can take the top lid off and throw it inside the pack, so that the pack is even more compact looking. So, if you're looking at all of this stuff. This is going to come in at under 40 pounds easily, probably more like 35 pounds. And I did not skimp on safety at all. It's just very sophisticated choice between lightweight, high quality gear and the appropriate safety items. Uh, well, let's pack it up and see how big it turns out. Not too bad, huh? Something I can live with for comfortably and sustain myself for two or three days in the mountains on a technical alpine route.